everybody. Welcome to Kiki Loves Nigeria. Hey y'all. I am going to do a video. In this video, I'm going to try to answer a question that somebody wrote and asked me. One of the Repack community members wrote and asked me, is it safe for women to travel around Africa by themselves, alone? And I thought about the question and I thought to myself, well, that's not a simple question to answer. There's no simple yes and there's no simple no. All right, that question is a loaded question. <laughs> So, is it safe to travel around Africa if you are a woman to solo travel? I would say I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. And let me tell you why I would not do it. And I've been to Africa 11 times. I may travel to Africa alone, but once I get there, I'm with people. Okay, I don't stay alone. I don't move around alone. I don't do anything alone. I make sure I'm with someone who's from there. Okay, and let me tell you why. Because I feel like Afri West Africa, we're going to talk about West Africa because you can't talk about Africa as a whole because it's too different. North is different from South, South is different from West, and West is different from East. So my specialty is West Africa. So in West Africa, it is a patri patriarchal, I hope I said it right, patriarchal society, which means men rule that society, okay? In a society where the man rules, there's different norms and there's different customs than what we're accustomed to in the West. Because we don't come from a society where one group rules, at least I don't. In my culture, men don't rule, you know. They don't rule. So, when you go to a place where men are dominant and men rule, it's completely different. Your behavior has to be different, your mannerism has to be different. Everything about you and the way you carry yourself must be different. All right, so let me explain to you. We live, women can pretty much in the West, we can go anywhere we want to. We can travel anywhere we want to. We can pretty much do anything we want to and we won't be looked at in a bad light, okay? But when you do that in West Africa, when you go as a woman to another country, okay? And you travel there alone, some men, I'm not going to say all of them, but some of them, a majority of them, the men and the women, are going to look at you like you're some kind of loose woman. And why I say that is because in the, where their culture, women don't travel around like that. Women don't move around like that, okay? Women don't just go off on their own and do whatever. They don't do that. So they figure if you're doing that, you got to be some kind of loose woman. You got to be some kind of woman who's just unruly and just does whatever. So you got to realize that's the society that you're entering into. So you're already entering into a society where these people are going to think because you traveled there alone that you are there, you know, you're just have low morals. All right more low moral character seriously that's what they're gonna think so that's the first thing you're going against is that people are gonna just assume because you're not married and you're there alone that you're just this loose woman who's just running around with no respect for herself and no respect for others all right I'm not saying everybody's gonna think that but you better believe a majority of the people are gonna think that the second reason I would not travel around West Africa alone, okay? It's because of the language barrier. Like I told you guys in so many videos, it is so hard to communicate. 
And if you're coming from a different country, speaking a different language, how are you going to communicate? How are you going to do business? How are you going to even do the basics? How are you going to order food? You know, how are you going to do anything if you don't know the language? And you think, oh, well, so for instance, like Nigeria, they speak English or even the Gambia. They speak English. But no, only the people who went to school speak English, people. If you have not went to school, you don't speak English. Okay, especially North American English people. We speak North American English which is totally different from British English. So that's all, that's going to be another issue you're going to have. Communication barrier. You're not going to be able to communicate. So you're a female in another country, okay, with you're traveling alone, so they're already going to be looking down on you because you're traveling there alone. So they're going to think you're some kind of loose woman because you're traveling alone. And then you can't communicate. So you can't even really tell the people what you want, what you're going to do, blah, blah, blah. Unless you know the local languages. And most North American people don't know the local language. And if you do know the local language, you're going to speak it with a North American accent. And it's not going to sound anything like they're used to. And they still are not going to understand you. Okay? So, the language barrier. That's another reason I would not do it. Thirdly, why I would not go to Africa and solo travel alone just because the cultural is so the cultural norms are so different than what we're used to for instance say I want to go in the United States I want to go out by myself there's no problem y'all I can just go to the nightclub I can go wherever I want to go have some drinks do whatever I want to no problem if I go to the nightclub in Africa by myself, they're going to think I'm there to pick up a man, that I want to be with a man, that I'm going there to get a man, that I'm going there to hook up with a man, and that I want to be intimate with a man. That's what they're going to think. They're not going to think, oh, she just want to go and chill and just relax. No, no, they're not going to think that. They're going to think you're there for the hookup. Y'all see all this pretty fall foliage? That's what I wanted to show y'all. It's beautiful out here. But they're, they're going to think you're there for the hookup. They're not going to think you're there for just the relaxation, the ambience. No. They're going to think you're there because you want a man. All right. And this is the reality because I've been in those situations before. And they thought I was a prostitute. Let me tell y'all, I went to Cameroon. And I was the only woman in the club. I was tired of being around everybody, so I needed a break, right? So I said, okay, I'm just going to go out, and I'm going to go get some drinks, and I'm going to just, you know, hang out by myself. So I went to this, uh, it was like a restaurant slash bar. Well, do you know when I went there, there, first of all, there was no women there. There were no single women there. The only women that were there, they were there with men. Okay. And um, when I went in, they were just looking at me real strange, right? So then I sat down, you know, and I was reading a book because there was this book I wanted to read. And I kept looking out. I kept feeling like somebody was staring at me. So I was reading a book. And I'm looking up like, why are these people just staring at me, staring at me, staring at me? So I finally ate my food and I left. And I went back to the hotel to where we were staying at. And I asked, you know, the people who I traveled there with, I was like talking to them about it. And I said, um, I wonder why they were looking at me like that when I went to the bar. And she was like, well, probably because you are a female. And you were at the bar and you were by yourself. And in Cameroon, women don't go to the bar and drink by themselves. Y'all, let me tell you, these women are so conservative in Cameroon. Do y'all know what they do? They put, this is what they showed me, y'all. They put orange uh, Fanta in the beer because they said you don't want people to know that you're a lady and you drink beer. So you put Fanta in the beer and it tastes pretty good. 
you mix, you put a Fanta on top of the beer and then you drink it and people won't know that you're drinking, you know, because ladies don't drink in Cameroon. So they surely don't go to the bar. So just imagine that you're in a culture where the ladies don't drink, they don't go to the bar, they don't smoke, they don't do any of that. So how do you think they're going to perceive you traveling there alone? Else. Well, then another thing you got to worry about when you're alone is being overcharged constantly. That's another thing. You're constantly being overcharged. They're constantly going to charge you a different price. And it's usually a higher price than they would if you were with somebody, a local, or if you were with a man, simply a man. So that's another reason. For economic reasons, I wouldn't do it. Economic reasons, social reasons, I just don't think traveling to West Africa by yourself as a female is safe. Now again, when I say travel, I don't mean getting on the plane and going there alone. I mean spending your visit there. I mean, like everything you do there, you're doing it by yourself. That is very dangerous. Going shopping alone, dangerous. Going out to the club alone, dangerous. All of that. Because there's somebody there, you better believe it or not, who's watching you and who's going to try to prey on you as soon as they get a chance. And that's the reality of the situation. So for economic reasons, I say no. For social reasons, I say no. For cultural reasons, I say no. Because remember, what did I say? This was a male-dominated society. And in a male-dominated society, women do not travel around on their own. Women do not go to other countries. They don't even know by themselves and visit. So us going to Africa by ourselves, that's like a new phenomenon. That's like a new trend. And it doesn't, I'm not going to say it doesn't fit well in their culture, but it's not something that they see West African women do. All right. So that's my perspective on it. Would I travel to West Africa alone and not know anybody and just go there and visit and discover it on my own? No, I would not. Do I recommend anybody do that? No, I do not. No, I do not. I recommend, like I always tell you guys, discover a country, research that country that you want to go to, go on the internet, make friends, find out who's in that country, make friends with people in that country, make sure they're safe as best as you possibly can, and then plan a visit there. Plan a visit there, make sure your friends are there to pick you up, make sure your friends are there to show you around because you can even get taken advantage of in the airport. Let me tell you real quick about an incident I had in the airport while I was in Nigeria. So we're in Nigeria at the airport, right? And um, we're at this airport. And this man comes and says he's, he wants to help me. All right, so I'm like, good, because I need some help. So he asked me for my uh, baggage tickets. Now, think about that. My bagic, bag claim tickets. Now, I was about to give it to him, but then I thought, wait a minute. If I give him my baggage tickets, then that means he can get my bags and he can take my bags and leave. My bags bec now become his bags. Well, that was a scam they were doing at the Nigerian airport at that time. They were scamming people, acting like they were gonna help you, but when they were doing is getting your luggage, and once they got your luggage, they would take them. They, you would never see them again. So, that's another reason, don't, don't go by yourself. I was by myself then, but I knew my friends had warned me. They told me, don't do that. If somebody comes to get your baggage, don't let them get your baggage because they're gonna take your baggage. So. My Nigerian friends had already warned me about that, so I knew. But what if I didn't have Nigerian friends? What if I wasn't talking to anybody from Nigeria? What if I would have just went on my own? There's no telling what would have happened. That dude would have got my bags. So, that's what I say. That's my opinion. That's what I think. So, it's up to you guys, but I personally would never do that. I would never recommend anyone to do that. 
I would recommend you do it the way we said, make friends, make contacts, reach, your, reach out to your contacts. When you go there, make friends, hang out with your contacts, and let them show you the city. Let them introduce you to the culture. That's the best way to discover a city, a culture, is through the people who live there, in my opinion. All right, guys, that's all I got. I'll be back with another video soon. Until then, y'all take care.